So these are the instructions for my pop-up ring card. And I've started with my rings already. I've cut out four rings out of foiled craft board. And because craft board has the brown on the other side, I have just colored the edges of the ring on the inside and on the outside. And then I cut out four pieces out of white craft board. I did the same thing. I took a marker and I just colored along the edges so that when you look at it, it you don't see the white. So I'm just going to glue my ring parts together. I'm starting with my foiled ring. I'm putting glue on the wrong side and then I'm grabbing one of my white rings, making sure that it's well stacked on top. More glue and another white ring, more glue and my final foiled ring with the ring on top so that the pretty side of my ring is showing. I have so many layers because I want this ring to be nice and sturdy. And I'm going to do the exact same thing with my other set of rings. So this is my card base. So this is Cricut Craft Board in the black. And then I have Cricut 80 pound card stock in the red. And then I have some Cricut white card stock and I have foiled on it. With the foil I've done two things to ensure that the foil comes out the way I like. The first thing I did is I took the image and I duplicated it. I centered the duplicate over the original and then centered it on my panel. So basically my foil tool knows to go twice over the image so there's less chance of it missing a spot. This Cricut cardstock has one side which is textured and the other side which is smooth. Normally I would put the textured side upwards, but because I was foiling it, I actually used the smooth side to foil. I find it gives a better finish. I'm just going to glue those panels down onto my card base, making sure there's an even border around all layers. So I have a rectangular piece with a multitude of score lines and I'm just folding down on all the score lines. So I'm just folding my rectangle in half and I'm going to put glue between the very last score line and the edge on one side. So keeping in mind that this is the center crease, I'm just folding this around and then gluing that tab on the right hand side of my center score line. So basically it looks like this. Then you're going to do it on the other side as well. You're just going to put glue between the score line and the cut line. Bring that other side in and glue your tab up against that center score line. And then when you pop your piece back up, it looks like this. So you've got a V groove in the center and you've got two rectangles on each side. I'm just going to put glue in that V groove, squish those sides together and I can may as well just flatten that whole piece. And then I'm popping it back into the rectangular formation. And this is the piece that gets adhered to the base of my card. So here's my card gate base, just ignore the mess in the middle. It was a trial run that didn't turn out so well. I'm just going to put glue on the entire bottom of this piece. I'm going to flatten my piece. The parts with the glue on them are on the left hand side. I'm just going to center it as best I can so there's an even amount at the top and the bottom. I'm just going to insert that right at the spine of my card, so right on that fold. And then I'm going to close my card and I'm going to pinch my card where I can feel that piece where I've put that glue. And then when you open it, you have your little shape. So these are my diamond pieces. My diamond pieces are cut out of white Cricut cardstock and I've used some Cricut holographic sparkle vinyl for the pattern on top. Of the six pieces, I have two styles. One of them has a slit in the center that comes from the top, and the other one, the slit in the center, comes from the bottom. Take one of each, so I'm going to intertwine both of them in the center, like so. They form like a, like a cross. Take another one that has a slit at the bottom, inserting it in the slot that's at the edge of that center diamond. I'm going to take the other one that has a cut at the bottom, and I'm going to put it on that third slit of that center diamond. So you should have all three of those pieces intersecting that middle piece, like so. And then we're gonna rotate it 90 degrees. And I have one of those diamonds with the slit that's coming from the top. And I'm going to insert it 
from the middle piece of my diamond right here. So I've got both other pieces flanking and I'm just slipping that one into position. And then on either side, I'm going to intertwine both sides. See, there's a slit here and there's a slit there. So those belong together. I'm just going to make sure that they connect. And so now I have this side of my diamond. I'm going to take my last piece and just from the bottom insert it into the center. And then again, I have a slit here. I have a slit right beside it. I'm just going to intertwine those pieces. And then on the other side, I have this slot here and this cut here. And I'm just going to, and then I'm just going to prop it up again. Truth be told, you may want to consider turning these adhesive vinyl lines into draw lines instead, or even foil lines. Ooh, foiling would be very pretty. Instead, because all those additional layers makes it a little bit harder for my diamond to pop up. But next we have a little holder for our diamond. I'm just folding down on all the score lines, and then the little tab at the end, I'm going to put a bit of a glue. I'm going to bring over, I'm just putting a cut line against that score line. I'm just going to use my reverse tweezers to make sure, just to hold that in place until the glue dries a little bit. So I have my card base. I'm going to put red line tape on the ring itself, but I just want to see how far up the ring I have to go. So pretty much from here to there. So I just want to make sure that I have enough coverage. I do. So I need from here to about there and to place it on the base like so. And I'm going to do that with the other one as well. I've used red line tape where I could have used glue because of the shiny material. So I do find that glue doesn't respond very well to foiled cardstock. So I opted for red line tape instead. Taking the backing off my red line tape and I'm just positioning my ring so that it's as centered as I can get it. I want the bottom of my ring to be at the center of this platform. And I'm trying to position this ring so that it's pretty much even with my other ring, like so. So next I have the platform for my diamond, and I have the diamond itself. I'm going to flatten my diamond, and I'm going to flatten my little holder piece, and I'm just dry fitting this, and then when it pops up, it fits like this. So on one side I'm dealing with just plain cardstock, which is great. I'm going to be putting glue on the point of this diamond shape and gluing it to this piece like so. But I'm also going to be putting glue on the point of this diamond and gluing it. Actually, the foil is going to get in the way from the glue adhering properly. So I'm just going to lift some of that away and just snip it off. So I put glue on that point where I've removed the adhesive foil. I'm going to flip it over to the other side and put glue on that other point as well. Now I'm covering the bottom of my diamond with my little diamond holder and making sure that both sides are adhered properly. And then I'm just going to push on the points of my diamond back into position. I'm just going to put red line tape on the tips of those two tabs like so. I'm going to remove the liner on my red line tape. So it's at the very top of the arc of my ring. And one of the tabs is going down to the ring itself. The other tab has the adhesive upwards. So I'm just going to close my card. And then when I open it, there's my ring. So now for the cover of my card. I have done something a little bit crazy. I have these little plastic cubes. And I'm going to use them as champagne bubbles in my champagne flute on the cover of my card. These are going to be my shaker elements. I've taken some pattern cardstock that I wasn't too keen on, and I cut out 12. And they're to build up the card enough so that my shaker elements will fit inside because these are quite dimensional. So I'm just going to glue these layers together. 
I wanted to provide a background for the shaker element. I have score lines on my page. I've just turned it 90 degrees just to give me a better view. This is some holographic sparkle vinyl. So now that I've embossed my card cover, flip it so that I'm looking at the wrong side. So my acetate needs to go here. Now, since this is the wrong side of my card, I'm just going to trace around my acetate piece. So I'm just placing my red line tape all along that outline that I've just traced, making sure that none of it overlaps on top of the cutout. So now I'm going to release the liner on my red line tape and I'm grabbing my acetate, removing the protective film and placing it over my red line tape. And then I have all those layers of cardstock. This goes on top. So I'm, I'm just putting my shaker elements inside my glasses. So now I've loaded up my shaker elements. I want to make sure they're all relatively flat. So I'm just going to put glue all over the rest of my card. And then I'm going to take my red paint, making sure the foil is positioned in the area I need it. Lay it on top. I'm just going to turn it over very carefully and make sure that it's more or less centered. I want an even border all the way around the card. So I have a piece of clean white cardstock that I covered with holographic sparkle vinyl. And then a piece of black cardstock, and then a piece of red adhesive foil. So I'm just going to adhere this to the front of my card. And for the back of my card, I've made a little booklet for people to sign. I have my pocket piece. It has three score lines. I've just folded down on all the score lines. I'm going to put glue on those three tabs that are formed by folding down the score lines, positioning it as much as I can so that there's an even border all the way around my red piece. Then I have a little booklet that goes inside. So I have the cover of my booklet with the two holes and it's the larger piece. And then I have the pages in white. I've only cut one page, but you could cut as many as you need to. I have some red embroidery floss and I have a needle. And So I'm using my reverse tweezers to help me make a little bow. My little booklet gets put into the pocket that's at the back of the card. In order to make my bow, I still have my ribbon on the spool and I have a small fork and my very thin ribbon. There's about three and a half inches of ribbon on my left side. So I'm just putting my index finger, pressing my ribbon to my fork, bringing my ribbon over the front of my fork, and then in an upwards motion, I'm going to place it in between those two tines. And then, and this is the tricky part, I'm going to poke the end, my cut end, in between the two tines, but at the bottom, below the bow. And then I'm going to pull tight on both ends. I'm going to turn, I'm going to turn my fork over and then I'm going to make a knot. So I'm making a knot in my bow. And as I'm doing it, I'm sort of pulling down on the ends of my bow, kind of like this. And then I'm going to flip my fork around again and take my bow off the fork and sort of tighten up those little ends. Clip off the little ends. I'm going to take a little piece of double-sided tape and put it at the knot on the back and then just add it to my glass like so.